Hi, welcome back to Artelino's Kitchen, where we are cooking with... Attitude! No, not Attitude, family! Oh, it's Attitude! Yeah! Yeah, yeah! Okay, all right, so today, today, we are going to be making chicken milanese. My kids know it as lemon, lemon chicken. chicken. All right? Is, is lemon chicken one of your favorite recipes? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, why do you like it so much? Because it tastes good. Because it gives food for It's basically just fried chicken with a lemon sauce, but it, it, is, it is pretty good. Okay, so we are going to start off with preparing. Now we got all our ingredients out. Do you remember what we call this? Our prep time? A preparation. It was our first word of the day. What are we, first word of the day? First word, calling a word from our first Mississippi? episode. Mississippi? No. I know it's like the month. It's like missing. Miss some plots. Miss some plots. Miss some plots. Right. So that's what we're doing right now. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our chicken. So let me wash my hands and then. Um, but first, should we do the word of the day? Oh, you want to do the word of the day? Okay, yeah. we can do the word of the day. So, let me do that. Let me dry my hands. The word of the day. And let me, well, let me get it so everybody can see it at home. And then we will ask you to pronounce it. Okay. What is that word? Roots. Rocks. <laughs> the correct, correct pronunciation is root. As close. Okay. And what a roux is, is a base for a sauce. And it's actually a combination of flour and fat. So typically flour and butter. And when we make the lemon sauce, that's how we're going to start it out. We're going to start it out with a roux. Okay? So, let's get to work. First thing we want to do is we want to prepare our chicken. And when we prepare our chicken, um, we are going to flatten it out with a mallet that'll get the cutlets nice and thin. Now, even if you buy the cutlets in the store, uh, you know, pre-cut, sometimes they're still a little thick. The chicken actually cooks much better if you flatten it out evenly. So we're going to do that with a mallet. Like this one. That this is, is not, not a mallet. mallet. What is that? <laughs> Those are tongs. The mallet looks like a hammer. Do you remember what? the hammer? Yes. It's in the yes. other drawer. All right, let's get the mallet out. <laughs> well, I guess you could whack it with this, but the, the, the mallet would work much better. Okay. But don't um, use these and then what we're going to do now. is we're going to, uh, so we're going to flatten it out first. We're going to season it. Very important that you season your chicken before you, uh, you bread it. Um, if you don't season it, um, it will severely impact the flavor. My wife always asks, how come mine tastes so much better than that hers? And this? it's because she doesn't season the chicken before uh, she, she uh, breads it. Can you not find? No, oh. it's right here. Okay. All right, well, just show everybody. It. We'll come over here so they can all see. I totally found it. So that is the mallet. All right, so why don't you also get the press and seal? From the seal. yes, the, the in the in the drawer. Um, you can use saran wrap, but I found the press and seal is stronger and it's less likely to break. And you could pretty much use one piece to flatten out all the chicken. So we have a flat board. Let's move this out of the way so everybody can see at home. No, those are tops. Do we use the point? No, 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 not yet. Do we use the pointy side? Yes. Actually, we use the pointy side. No, 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 not yet. Do we use the pointy side? Actually, no. So the pointy side is a good question. The pointy side is for tenderizing, right? Um, what we we just want to flatten it, so we're just going to use the flat side of the mallet. Okay, so let's take our press and seal. So the chicken is going to go under the press and seal. Oh. Yeah, under. Yes. So we'll lay out a bunch of pieces like so. I'm excited. To You're excited. Smack. You're excited to smack. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, and then. Do that. Now the goal here is to get all the chicken approximately the same thickness, right? Some of them are already thin, but all I'm going to do is to make a lot of noise. I'm going to tap it down. Now even with the cutlets, it will flatten it out a little bit, but it makes a nice big flat cutlet. Right, now this one is a little thicker, so I'm going to hit that a little harder. See how much bigger that one got? I don't know if you can, you can see, that chicken cutlet was a lot smaller when I started. But now they're all flat and even. Okay, so let's My take, turn. it's your turn? All right, so let's take one of the containers and let's use this temporarily to store our chicken in. We so we know which ones we flattened out. Right, so let's just put that in there. That's gross. Okay. 
Now you want to be careful. You don't want to hit it too hard because the chicken will start to break apart. You're just trying to, to flatten it out and make it. Okay. All right. So your turn. So that one is a little thicker, right? Can you see that one's thicker? Uh -huh. This one's pretty thin, so that doesn't. We don't need too much. And then we have this one. Okay. Yep. All right. Get smacking. Okay. Now. Instead of holding it up here, hold it towards the bottom. Okay? okay. You don't have to go too hard, but you get more control. There you go. Perfect. Right, a little bit, a little bit thinner over here. You can see how it's thicker? Okay. Perfect. All right, again, let's move this out of the way so everybody can see. Alright, so that one's thinner, so you don't have to hit one as hard. Alright, let's so just flatten that one out. Okay, and then let's do the last one. That's awesome, Anna. Okay, great job. Uh, and, and move your fingers out of the way so you don't smack your hand. Right, that's good. Don't, don't go too hard. We just want to get it flat, right? Okay. He'll eat that one. All right, that's okay. They get it even. What are you laughing about? He's not doing it right. Come on, Andy. All right, come on, two more. You can tell he's really having a great time. Hey, you, you just popped a hole in that piece of chicken. All right, come on, one more. All right, good enough. You want to show everybody the hole you made? Wait, no, you have to lift it up. See, you made like a big hole because you hit it way too hard. All right. That is what not so, to do. Yes, that, that is, is what not to do. You, nope, what you don't have to hit it that hard. All right, so we're going to leave these on here. Um, the reason why I like to use these casserole dishes is when you when you bread and when you um, you know put the, the the egg wash on the on the chicken, um, it's a lot easier if there's some depth to the bowl. That way the bread you put it on a plate, the breadcrumbs kind of spread across. Also, I can do more than one at a time. Uh, if I use a plate or like a red, hey guys, stop fighting. Come on, I'm gonna put these away. All right. <laughs> It's kids, right? Okay, so we're gonna use these and we're gonna uh, put breadcrumbs. We'll have our final chicken that we'll put in here. And then I'll use this one for our egg wash. All right, so we're gonna crack, uh, do you remember how many pounds of chicken mommy Ten? we bought? No. Three. Three pounds? Okay, mommy is behind the scenes uh, uh, watching Bounce. everything. Yes, well that's a real important one too, right? And the actress, right? Okay, so we're gonna do the egg. So Anna, why don't you crack? Um, let's put uh, let's put three eggs. Perfect, Andy. All right, keep going. All right, while we're doing that, let's start seasoning our chicken. Now, okay, I like to use kosher salt. This is the only salt that I cook with. Um, if you use table salt and you sprinkle it on, you won't actually see it because it'll dissolve right into the meat as soon as it touches the meat. You won't know how much you put on. You use kosher salt, it sticks to the surface. It's bigger granules, you'll be able to do that. Okay. Um, so season in layers too. Don't put the food on top of the other food while you're doing this because then you could potentially double season and you don't, then you'll have too much salt and that doesn't taste good, right? Um, this is gonna be a little hard to see, so I'm gonna bring the camera over so you can actually see what this looks like. Focus, mate. Okay, so I'm gonna take the salt in my fingers, watch guys, and I'm going to just sprinkle it on Ooh. the chicken. <laughs> you guys are too funny. All right, so you can see I just lightly coated it. Again, this is a personal preference. I just like to get a little bit you know, around the chicken so I know the whole chicken is coated, right? So. Um, I'll try to get the camera as close as possible so you can see it. So once I do the salt, then I'm going to do the pepper. Now this you can just use the pepper mill. All right, well, again, let me do first and then you guys. So again, just even seasoning. And that's really important too. You want it to be even because if it's not even, then um, your food is not going to taste that way. It's not going to taste. It's not going to taste even. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and then season the other side. So now why don't you do that part, Anna? Do this. Okay. okay. Now you do that part. Okay. I season it. So start with the salt. 
And go and to it's pretty here. good. A little bit more. You can see how hard this would be to see if you um, use table salt because it's even hard to see the kosher salt. I can kind of see it. It might not be hard to see with the camera. Okay. Make sure you get the whole thing. Miss some spots. Perfect. Okay, and then do that one. Perfect. That's great, Anna. All right, now do the pepper. All right, so let's do the rest of this for the sake of time. Daddy will do this. Did Andy get a chance? No. All right, well then we'll let Andy. I like to use the panko breadcrumbs. These are Italian seasoned. Um, they give such a nice crust on the outside of the chicken. You can use regular breadcrumbs, but if you can find these, I really recommend them. All right, so we're gonna put these inside our dish, enough to cover the bottom. I tend to find you end up using more panko breadcrumbs, so we're probably going to go through this whole box with all that chicken, so we're just going to pour all that in there. All right, and then we're going to do the egg wash and the breading. Okay, wait, so let me do the first one. Now you can do this with your hands, you can use tongs. I usually just typically use my hands, our hands are clean. So dip in the egg, egg again, let it drip out, right? Okay, and then with the panko, just tap down the chicken. Make sure you get an even coating of breadcrumbs on the old chicken. If there isn't any on there, you could just sprinkle some on, tap it down, and you're done. Okay, so we gotta do that for all these pieces of chicken. Look at my hands. Look at your hands. Show everybody. Okay. Messy. I only use the tips of your fingers. You were using the whole hand, right? Just try to, okay, don't play with it. That makes it worse. I'm trying to all make right, so you can wash that off. All right, Andy, your turn. Yeah. All right, so grab a piece of chicken. Okay, so okay, grab that piece of chicken. This Thank one, the big one. You can do both. Okay. All right, use your tips of your hands. Okay. Now we're only doing one at a time, but if we get in a, a nice pattern here, as one does one, do the other. Okay. Put that there. All right, so put some breadcrumbs on top of the spots that were missed, right? So this is a little thin there. All right, go ahead, tap it down. Right, that looks pretty good. All right, show everybody what you did. That looks awesome. Awesome, awesome. I was gonna say great, and great and awesome came out awesome. That was not what I intended. Okay, all right, so. We're gonna finish these up, and then we'll go on to the next step of pan frying. All right, so we have breaded all our chicken. The kids did a great job finishing up. We got a nice assembly line going. Uh, we're now ready to fry everything up. Um, now, normally I would try to fry these up and be making the sauce at the same time, but we're gonna do this in order so you can see it. Uh, what we'll do with the chicken is we'll fry it up, and then once it's ready, we'll rest it between paper towels, cover with some foil so it stays warm. You can always reheat it in the oven. Uh, just don't leave it in the oven while you're cooking because it'll dry it out. You know, reheat it and then serve it. Okay, so we're gonna have the chicken. Um, you can use olive oil, you can use canola oil. Both are uh, have a high smoke point, which means they're great for frying, um, but uh, canola oil is much cheaper. So I usually use canola oil um, and it, it tastes great. So it, it, it'll be fine. Um, now we're gonna pan fry. Do you know what that means? Yes. Okay, what do you think it means? <laughs> to have fun. <laughs> to have fun. <laughs> to fry the pan. <laughs> to fry the pan? Close, we're gonna fry in a pan. We're gonna fry in a pan. We're gonna fry the okay. chicken in a pan. Okay. No, we're gonna fry the so pan what does in it a mean, pan. What does it mean to fry? Something. Uh, um, like to, to fry french fries. Okay, but what does it mean to fry? Um, to make something burn into pieces. No, you don't want to eat that. <laughs> Frying food is when you're cooking in oil, right? So we're going to fry in the canola oil. Now when you pan fry, you want to put enough oil in the pan so it goes up about halfway up the chicken. This is also important why the chicken needs to be pretty level and even. Because what you're going to do is you're going to cook one side, cook it through, and then flip it over and cook the other side. I like to use a pancake grill. 
Um, this is great because I could probably fry about six cutlets at once. If I use just a regular fry pan, um, I'll be here all day because they only probably fit two of those in a pan. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna fill it up with just enough oil so that it goes up about halfway to, to coat the chicken. If I don't put enough oil in, I won't get that nice crispy um, outside. Remember, you want to uh, cook the food in the fat, not just have a thin layer on the bottom. Dad? Yes. When happened to we use a glass pan? Well, I just use the glass pan to hold the chicken. What if you put this on the fire? And That's a very good melt. question. You never want to put, no, if you put a glass pan like this on the stove, it will shatter. Daddy did that in college once, and he made asparagus or something, and I put it on the stove, and I heated it up in there, and I forgot what I did, but I think I, I brought it to a cooler spot, the thing, and the whole thing just cracked. There was glass everywhere in the food and everything. Never put glass on top of I direct heat. Would. This is only good for baking. No, you want you can put this in the oven, but that's it. So I thought it would melt. Yes. No, you'd have to get that really hot. To, I don't think a stove will get hot enough to actually melt glass, but it will shatter. Okay, all right, so we're gonna get our oil heated up on the stove. Uh, when you heat it up, um, you wanna get it hot enough, and I'll show you, so that when you, do you guys remember? How do you know the oil's hot enough? Yes. Um, if you drop something in it and like- What are you gonna drop in it? Uh, breadcrumbs. Right, so you're gonna take a little bit of the breadcrumbs and you're just gonna drop it in the oil and if it immediately touches the oil and sizzles, then you're ready to fry. You do not want to put your cold meat into cold oil because what'll happen is the chicken will just absorb the oil and you'll get a gross oily piece of chicken. You want the chicken to touch the oil and immediately start to cook on the outside. That seals the outside and gives you nice juicy chicken in yeah. the middle, right? Okay, so we'll heat that up, and as soon as that's ready, we'll go over to the stove and we'll show the kids how to fry up the chicken. Yeah! Okay, so we have our frying station all set up. We have our chicken over here, which is all the breaded chicken. We have our oil heated up um, inside our, our griddle, and then we have a plate with some paper towel, because as soon as we take the chicken out, we want to rest it on the paper towel and probably put another piece of paper towel on, dab it, and, and try to remove any excess oil. Now, um, in order to test that the oil is hot, you really want to get the oil hot enough so it's just about to smoke, uh, but without smoking. Once it starts to smoke, hold on, Andy, um, it will start to burn, and then that's gonna introduce a really bad flavor into your chicken. So um, the way you can easily test this is just simply drop, okay, go ahead, Andy. So see, as soon as Andy dropped that piece of, that is just a, a breadcrumb in the oil, see how it immediately sizzles? That's how I know the oil's hot enough. So if you just heat it up slowly, um, uh, you're better off doing that than trying to heat it up too quickly, and then just wait until you see that sizzle. Now you're ready to put the chicken in. Two really important rules. Number one, never have your hands wet. Uh, if water touches that, if you have water on your hands and it drips and drops into the oil, it will instantly evaporate and will come up and possibly burn you and hit you in the hand or your face. So you gotta be really careful about that. The other rule is when you put the chicken down into the oil, you wanna start, um, towards you and then drop it away from you. Now notice as soon as I put that chicken in, it started to sizzle. So I'm gonna do a couple. Oh, actually I'll do the ones up here and then I want Anna and Andy to do that. Okay, Andy, so grab a piece of chicken. Let's move that over and hurry up because it's cooking. So grab a piece. Okay, back, bottom first and gently put it. Now don't, right, okay. And that will prevent oil from splattering in your face. Okay, Anna, go ahead. Do the next one. And right, we can probably get two more up there. Can you reach? Okay, so put it in. Forward. Perfect. All right, one more. Let's get one more in there. I'll do it. Find one that'll fit. All right, let me just move this over a little bit. Okay. Can I do it? All right, hurry up, Anna. All right. Now, you look at the chicken and you start to see... Uh, the chicken cooking, it'll start to turn white. Those are the proteins in the chicken starting to cook. Um, usually you can do this, I'm gonna lower this a little bit because this is really frying up. Um, usually uh, one to two minutes tops 
on a side. Uh, when you start to see the edges turning white and browning up, uh, that's how you know it's time to flip it. Now you can peek and you can look. That's getting a nice brown. Maybe we'll do a little bit more, maybe another 30 seconds. They are going to quick, cook pretty quickly because they're pretty thin, okay? So, all right, now smaller pieces are gonna cook more quickly too. This one happens to be a little smaller. So see that one is browning up. So let's wait another, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, and then we'll flip it, okay? Let me show with this one. So I'm gonna take it from the top, lift it up, put the bottom side down, and flip it over, okay? Peek on that one. All right, you want, you want a peek? Yeah. All right, that one is actually looking pretty good. You wanna do that one? Yeah. Okay. So lift it up, hold it tight, put it down. Perfect, look how beautiful that looks. Nice golden color. Okay. Cha -cha! All right, you wanna do one more and then let Anna do. Or Anna, you wanna do. Okay, come on, Anna. Okay, so these have been on for about a minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, the chicken's pretty firm when I hold it in my hand. It's got nice color on both sides. I'm gonna call this done. We'll put that on top of our paper towel. Take the smaller one off. Can I do it? You wanna do one? Okay, go ahead. All right, go ahead. All right. Now flip it. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to flip it over. Well, we get to see the color. All right, and then before I put more chicken on, we'll just do another paper towel. Daddy, we'll pat this down. Daddy, do one and then I'm gonna well, do Well, maybe Anna wants to do them. Yeah, All right, and then let's take them. So our chicken is all fried up. We actually had it all here. Can we see so it? no, not yet. Um, it's layered between paper towels, so the chicken is all there. You can see the steam coming off of it. So the foil on top with the paper towels, that'll keep it warm for quite a bit. We're gonna now make our, our Milanese sauce or our lemon yes. cream sauce. Ooh, okay, now I prefer Milanese with a creamy sauce, and the kids really like it too. Well, Andy likes it more than that. But um, you don't like it? No. No, she doesn't. But Andy loves it and I love it. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by zesting our lemons. Okay. Is this how you now, do it? Well, let me show. So, we have a plate, right? I know how you do we have our micro blade. I know, I've seen people do this. Before. Okay, well, then I'll do it and then you can show Andy. Okay. So, we're gonna I hold our blade over our plate and we're gonna push the lemon into the, the blade I know how to, do that. to get the zest off of it, right? Now, if you want, you can hold the blade against the plate. This plate is not too flat, so we can do that. Okay. You see how we're getting zest? Now, all right, you want to do it? So, all right, so let Anna try. Okay. Sometimes kids find this hard to do because they can't press hard enough against the, the blade to actually get the zest to come out. Um, okay. Yeah, it's coming out. Here, just, just tap it on the plate. So you can see, is any, turn it over. Do you see any? Yeah, there's yeah. some there. Okay. There's a lot. That's all right, just keep doing it. Okay. You really want the, uh, the zest from the lemon um, in addition to the, the lemon juice because it'll add uh, tremendous flavor into the sauce. Um, and even though the sauce, when it's all done, will be very lemony, it'll balance very nicely with the, with the fried chicken. Okay. All right. This is going to take a while, so we're going to zest our lemons and we'll be right back. Okay. So our lemon is zested. Now, we had very small lemons, so I did three. We may not use all of this, but I better have more than, than less. Um, Can we squeeze these now? Yeah. So we also need the lemon juice. Now, um, <laughs> They're really excited because I told them how to do this before. If you have a lemon and you're trying to get the juice out of it, if you take the lemon and press and roll on the countertop, it actually loosens up the lemon, it makes it a lot easier to squeeze it out. Um, however, when you zest the lemon, you pretty much took all the, the hard skin off of it, so it, it is pretty easy to squeeze, so you really don't have to do this like step. Like what I'm just and doing. If, yeah. All right, I, well, actually I don't think we need that lemon with the skin on it, so let's just do the ones that are there. Like you can already see some lemon. Yeah, so once juice starts coming out, you know you pressed enough, right? You don't need to do any more. And that's gonna happen because we took all the skin. Wait, 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 so we're gonna cut it in half. Okay, so we're gonna cut the lemon in half. And then what I want you to do is take I know, a, I know how to do Okay, this. he knows how to do it. Wait, wait, wait. 
have a strainer for the seeds. I'm gonna put the fork in the middle and then just squeeze the lemon, okay? And squeeze all the juice out. That's pretty good, Andy. You're getting a lot of juice out. Okay. If you want, you can strain the seeds later. It's just you don't want the seeds in your, in your sauce. I typically use one of these hand strainers. All right. So now we have all our ingredients. We are ready to make. Andy, you don't need that. We're ready to make our sauce. All right. So we are going to start off by making our roux. Okay. Do you remember what a roux was? Uh, base of the sauce. Oh, it was right. It's the base of the sauce. What is it made out of? Uh, flour, and lemons, salt. No, flour and cheese. <laughs> Fat. No. Yeah, of which you have none. <laughs> like so we're gonna mix flour and fats. So we're gonna use butter. Um, in this case, I want to use unsalted butter because. If you use unsalted butter, then you can add salt to the recipe. You can use salted butter, but there's a greater chance that you could oversalt it. So use unsalted butter. All right. So I'm going to heat up my pan, and what we're going to do is we're going to mix uh, even amounts of butter and sauce of and flour. So we're going to have one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of flour. Okay. So why don't you get the flour out and get a tablespoon? And then we'll it's measure that. It actually tastes as good if you bite into it. Andy loves lemons. I don't know why he will sit and eat lemons, but he loves lemons. That's probably why he loves the lemon sauce so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm melting that butter over a low heat. I just want to get the butter to the point where it's melted, and then I'm going to whisk in the flour. Okay. So let me show. Wait, don't mix it. Let me show everybody at home. All right. Normally I would do this on top of the stove, but see how the butter is nicely melted. Mm -hmm and it's starting to foam up. Okay, now let's add in your flour. Okay, all right, go ahead. You pack that in tight. All right, so now you have the flour. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna whisk this flour in. And you wanna actually cook the flour, because otherwise you're gonna have a, a funny, uh, tasty taste, right? So you wanna actually cook the flour through and in this case, we want a blonde roux. So you can see how it's starting to get a little yellow. Um, we're just gonna, I'm gonna bring this back over the heat and we're gonna do this for about 30 seconds. This is gonna be the base of our sauce and it's what's gonna make our sauce thicken up really nicely. All right, so Anna, while Daddy is doing this, why don't you get, um, uh, we have the lemon, we need white wine. So let's get the white wine and we need a couple tablespoons of white wine. Okay, yep. So why don't you measure out two tablespoons of okay. white wine? This? Yeah, so I'll help you. Yeah. Alright, go ahead. Put it over there. So two tablespoons of white wine. Go ahead, put that in. No, no, just just pour it in the bowl. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna I just wanna add and measure it while it's heating up. Okay. Alright, and then we're gonna get a little garlic. So let's get a teaspoon of garlic. Okay. Add a heaping teaspoon, that's fine. Okay, put that in the, in the wine. All right, now, as soon as this, so you can see this is starting to get a little brown, probably within 30 to 60 seconds. Um, and I know you can't smell this at home, but it starts to get fragrant. That's how you know that this is ready. So we're gonna a little bit more, let that heat up, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour in the wine and garlic and pretty much let it evaporate within the pan. So, all right, so why don't you pour, oh, don't let that spill. All right, so why don't you pour the wine and garlic in the pan? Okay, see how it's sizzled? Okay, you want it hot. Now that wine is almost gonna cook off instantaneously. If you look, you'll see there's actually very little liquid in here, but that's what you want. It's gonna cook off and then you'll see the flour starts to clump up, the roux starts to clump up, that's perfectly okay. All right, so once we have this, now what we're gonna do, we have the wine, we have that, we're gonna add our bouillon. So take the, the yellow bouillon that we crushed up, put that in here, and we're just gonna stir it and mix this in. That'll just add a nice chicken flavor. Um, you could use sauce, I mean, uh, chicken stock and reduce it down. Uh, but this is quicker and works just as well. Now keep in mind, bouillon has a lot of salt, so I probably want to add very little salt to this sauce. Um, 
uh, but this should be good. Okay, so we have all that here. Now, continue to stir that, let that cook a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure our heavy cream and we're gonna pour the cream in to make the sauce. Okay. And we'll do, first do one cup and I'll get that in. All right, no, I'll bring this over. Okay, so, just so we can show everybody, again, I would normally do this over the stove, you're gonna pour the cream in very slowly. So just put a little bit in. And once you put the cream in, start to whisk it in to the, to the, the, the root, right? And then once it all absorbs it, then put a little more in and whisk it in. You wanna do this like this. If you pour it all in at once, it's gonna clump up and it's, you're not gonna get a nice smooth sauce. So see how it all comes together? All right, so now put a little bit more in. Okay, as you start to add more, you can add more and more. Uh, it'll more easily blend. But you can see again, see how it just starts to keep thickening up and all the cream. All right, and just keep doing that until all the cream is added. All right, so probably one more time. Now it's kind of like a creamy, somewhat consistency. So it's enough that I can just put the rest of the cream in. All right, so why don't you put the rest of the cream in and we need one more half a cup of cream. All right, continue whisking until it's all incorporated. Okay, and we're gonna add in our lemon juice. You did okay. half a cup, right? Half a cup. make it yellow. Okay, okay. All of it? Yep, go ahead. And then what gives the sauce its nice yellow color is that lemon zest. So we're gonna take that zest and we're gonna put in probably about two tablespoons. I'll we'll probably start with that. Um, all right, if that was a tablespoon, it's a handful. I'm gonna put that in here and I'm just gonna warm this up on the stove. Okay. All right, so I think our sauce is done. Yay. You can see how it's nice and bubbly. It is mm -hmm. thickened up. This has only been on the stove for probably another one or two minutes. Um, again, normally I would do this on the stove, but uh, what I like to do is let's taste it. Um, Okay, so now I know Anna doesn't like it, so if you want, you don't have to taste it. But Andy, this. why don't you taste? So it's put a little hot. on the spoon. Yeah, it is hot, so blow on it. Mm, ooh, that dripped on my hand. <laughs> okay, we'll taste that again. Is that good? I never tried it because it's too hot. All right, we'll blow on it. <laughs> Come on, Andy, just try it. I want to taste this chicken. Do you want to taste the lemon sauce? You have a spoon. No, I want no, to No, you don't want to taste it? Oh, you want to taste the chicken? All right. Is it good? You just ate a whole lemon, yeah. so. All right. Uh, Perfect. Okay, so let's take our chicken out of our plate. So yeah. I'm going to pour the sauce on top. So this one will probably be mommy or daddy's because you guys like it on the side. I like right? it on top or on okay. the side. I'm Ooh, that's a really big chicken, piece. Though? You want? I know, I know. You want to taste the chicken. Let me Where's find a nice piece one? that we can plate. All right, so we'll put one piece here. Can I taste this part? Well, wait a minute, Anna. Let me put it together. Mm -hmm. All right, and we'll put another um, piece here like that. How does that look? Good? Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's get a spoon, and we will drizzle some sauce on top. Okay. So... Wearing a sash. Yeah, because they like, those things. Right. And then let's sprinkle a little bit of fresh uh, parsley on top. Okay, and there we have it. Dig in! Right, you want to dig in? All right, wait, let's cut a piece. Does everybody have a You didn't get me a fork and knife. You always do that. I need a fork and knife. You don't have a fork and knife? I got my sandwich. All right, here you go. All right, now tell everybody how it tastes. Good. You get the lemon sauce. All right, I'm gonna take a piece too. All right, let's get a nice piece with some of that lemon sauce. 
It only hurts my teeth, but mm. Mm. that's because of other things. That that's are delicious. But it's um, really good. Great lemon flavor. Um, the, the chicken is perfectly cooked, nice and juicy on the inside, crispy on the outside. Um, perfect meal. And you can see they're just eating it all up. All right, well, I think that sums up uh, this episode of Artelina's Kitchen. What do you think, guys? Yeah. Ready to eat dinner? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you soon. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.